when I get questions about Dolby Atmos and really just about any kind of audio production, a lot of the time, the problems I'm seeing people run into, they just come down to not understanding signal flow. So today, I just want to kind of hopefully quickly go through how the signal flow works for Atmos to kind of help you understand that a little better if you're having a hard time with it. First off, let's look at traditional signal flow really quick. And when I'm talking about signal flow, I'm basically talking about how does our original sound get from its sort of beginning, its source to our speakers or to our recording? How do we get from the input to the output? Now, I'm going to skip a lot of this stuff today because signal flow can get pretty in depth and really focus mainly on the differences between our traditional kind of stereo workflow for mixing and Dolby Atmos. Let's just as an example, let's say, you know, we've got a few different sounds here, like just a snare guitar, lead vocal. Maybe there's a parallel bus for doing some parallel compression, uh, a reverb for a vocal. And then we have this kind of stereo mix bus. So first off, something that we've got to remember is there is going to be a panner. So let me drop this right here. All of these are going to have a panner. And let's make a bunch of these. This is going to be important, especially when we get into Atmos. So our snare drum, it's going to go into the panner. Guitar goes to the panner. Lead vocal. Now, a panner, contrary to what you might think, a panner is just a mixer. In the case of a stereo workflow, we're choosing between either left or right. And basically, this panner or mixer, it's just adjusting the level balance between the left and the right. So if I pan that, snare to the center, it's going to send it to the left. It's going to send it to the left and to the right. Maybe this guitar, I just pan it to the left. Lead vocal, again, probably going to go to the left and the right. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. This is just a level control, the panner between the left and the right. Now with our snare drum, let's say we wanted to do some parallel compression on it. So We'll route this over here to our little drum spank. Move that out of the way. Lead vocal, if we want to put some reverb on it, I'm going to send that over there to the reverb. So all of that stuff is going to flow. And then this drum spank, you know, again, we're probably going to go to the left and the right, left and the right on our reverb. So lots of lines. <laughs> This is why signal flow gets complicated. And if you've watched any YouTube videos, you've probably learned ways of massively overcomplicating all of this. But ultimately, we are just sending our signals to the left and the right. And most of the kind of top level mix engineers, the legendary engineers who grew up on analog consoles, this is it. It's pretty simple in a lot of ways. There's, you know, there's there's more to this, of course. You know, we could break this down. We could have an equalizer here, maybe a compressor, fader for level control. But in terms of comparing this to Atmos, this is how it works. And then our, our left, right here, you know, we probably run that into our left speaker and then put that in our right speaker or here, maybe like that. So anyways, hopefully this kind of makes sense. So this was our traditional kind of stereo mixing signal flow. What happens when we have Atmos though? Well, this mix bus goes away. That's gone. Now we have instead 
a Dolby Atmos renderer. So the renderer is going to send to our speakers just to make things simple. Let's just do that here and go over here. All right. So the renderer sends out to our speakers. So how do we get this stuff over to our renderer? The first option we have would be the bed. So we can do a 7.1. 7.1.2 bed. This is going to be 10 channels. Okay. There's option one. We could just send things from our, our panner right into this bed. There we go. Very similar workflow to kind of what we've been used to. The other option we have, though, are our objects. So let's just go object. And we can have up to 128 of these. So we'll just make a bunch of these. Be lots of objects in here, potentially. Now, if I'm routing to an object, though, let's say, let's say this guitar. Well, to get to that object, we're going to lose this panner. And we're going to go straight to the object. What about panning data? Panning data gets sent via metadata. In fact, let's just do this. So we'll call this, here we go, panning metadata. So in addition to sending to that, the panner in our DAW is going to send panning metadata from that channel to the renderer so that the renderer can tell where to go, okay? Hopefully that is making sense. In, in some ways, the way SignalFlow works with Atmos, it is different because we get into this object-oriented environment. And when we're thinking about objects, things don't seem like they have as concrete of an existence as they used to for us working in traditional. But they actually do because we're still just busing to things the same way we always have. It's just the busing isn't internal in our DAW the same way. I mean, if you're using an internal renderer, yes, that renderer is inside, but we're busing to the renderer and then the renderer is taking care of where everything needs to go. Now with our bed, if we're routing something to the bed, this panner here, it's going to work just like the panner did in our traditional kind of stereo workflow where it is controlling the level between the different bed channels. And then the Atmos renderer knows where to position each of those bed channels. But when we go into the object again, we're sending information directly to our object, and then the positional information, the panning information, if you will, that is going to be transmitted via metadata to the renderer. Now, we can do sort of a little more traditional workflow, though, if we want. Let's put this panner back because we can have buses in front of all of this Atmos stuff. So let's say... It's like me, I have a 914 or a 916 mix bus. Well, now I can take all of these things, send them to here. Now this mix bus can get routed. Maybe I want to use some of the channels for the bed. We can do that. But I can also go to objects. So maybe I can use the seven one from the bed and then I'm going to need some sets of objects to use for my height channels. You know, we can do another four of these for height channels. Hope this is making sense. It's starting to get confusing with all these lines all over the place. And then again, there would be panning data that would be sent from here for how those objects need to get positioned, okay? Hopefully this kind of makes a little bit of sense. Signal flow, I know it can get a little confusing, especially when we've got a lot of different paths, 
but these are just different ways we can work. That's Atmos signal flow in a nutshell. I mean, like anything, could probably get a little more complicated, but I hope that kind of helps clarify some information for you. This mix bus here, like this workflow, this is why a lot of engineers, I think, really like doing kind of an object bed workflow because that's sort of what this is. When we use that kind of workflow, it makes this traditional workflow for us with the panner all working the same like we're used to. It just kind of gives us a little more familiarity. So not the only way to work. You can go direct to objects. You can use object bed. There are a lot of ways that you can really mix for immersive content using the format. So I hope this helps clear some things up and clarify some things. But if you've got questions on signal flow, if I've confused things even more, please let me know down below in the comments. If there is something related to Atmos that you are still having a hard time wrapping your head around, please let me know below. I'll try and get back to you and maybe I'll even make a video on it. So thanks for watching. I will talk to you soon.